Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about translating between tables and expressions. And by the end of this lesson you should be able to say, I can write, read, and figure out expressions in which letters represent numbers. Let's start by looking at a table. Now remember in class we talked about evaluating expressions. If I had a table, I could evaluate the expression 3h minus 2. And I would do that by plugging in the given values for h wherever I see h in my algebraic expression. So here, for example, 3h minus 2, if h is 6, I would do 3 times 6 minus 2. And that gives me 3 times 6 is 18, minus 2, that's 16. For the next one, I would do 3 times 7 minus 2. And 3 times 7 is 21, minus 2, 19. To do 8, I would do 3 times 8 minus 2. And 3 times 8 is 24, minus 2 is 22. Now you may be noticing a pattern here. In each, every time I increase h by 1, you'll notice I am increasing the value of my expression by 3. So as long as my h values go in order, I can continue this table without having to plug in and do the work. So I would know my next expression then. I would add 3 to 22 and get 25. And 25 plus 3 is 28. We're going to be looking at tables today and trying to figure out what is the algebraic expression I would, ha I would use to create a given table. In this example, 3h minus 2 is the function that relates to the left column of numbers. It relates the left column of numbers to the right column of numbers. 3h minus 2. So now, here is a table that's missing its headings. So I need to figure out how do I get from 1 to 2, or 1 to 4, 2 to 8, 3 to 12, 4 to 16, and 5 to 20. Before we do that, though, let's look back at the last one. Notice here, every time I increased by 1 on my H column, I increased by 3 on my 3H minus 2 column. Oops. If I look in my algebraic expression, Notice 3 goes right next to the h, or 3 is being multiplied by h. Let's see if we can use that information to create our next table. If I am looking down this table, I notice that on my h side, all of my numbers are increasing by 1. So if all of my numbers are increasing by 1, I can look down my side with the algebraic expression and think, what am I increasing by here? And in this case, I am increasing by 4 each time. Now remember in the last problem, when I was increasing by 3 each time, the 3 came right before my variable. So now when I'm increasing by 4 8 each time, I know my 4 is going to come right before my variable. And if I look, 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, and 5 times 4 is 20. So, for my n or h or whichever number letter I want to give my table, for any value of n, I would get 4n to get my uh, column on the right.
table's gonna be a little different. <clears throat> Again, on my P column, I am increasing by one each time. So I would look on my algebraic expression column, or the column on the right, <clears throat> and I would say, what am I increasing by each time here? Well, in this case, each time I'm increasing by one. So that tells me I'm gonna have a one before my P. But one times one does not equal four, and two times one does not equal five. So I need to now figure out what I must add or subtract from that product. So for example, one times one plus three gives me four, because one times one is one, plus three is four. One times two is two, plus three gives me five. One times three, now I'm plugging in these one, two, and threes because that's where the P is. And the left column tells me what I'm going to plug in for P. So one times three is three, plus three gives me six. So sometimes what I need to do if after I determine what the coefficient or the number that comes before my variable, which is being multiplied by my variable, is called a coefficient. When I figure out what my coefficient is, I sometimes need to go and figure out what I need to add or subtract from that product in order to create the left column. So in each of these, I notice that I'm adding three. So my algebraic expression is going to be 1p plus 3, or just p plus 3. Because if we have a coefficient of 1, we don't need to write it. It can be invisible. Let's look at this one. I notice on the w column that I am increasing by 1 each time. So I'm going to look over here on my left right column and notice that I am in increasing by 10 each time. So this tells me that I'm going to have a 10 as my coefficient of W or 10 times W. But if I look at this, 10 times 1 doesn't equal 8. 10 times 1 is 10. What do I need to do to 10 to get to 8? I need to subtract 2, because 10 times 1 is 10, minus 2 is 8. Let's try it with the second one. 10 times 2 is 20, minus 2 is 18. Because once I plug in my variable with a value, I need to look at the right column and say, is that what I get? Is 10 times, 10 times 2 is 20. Is 20 what I need? No, I need 18. What do I need to do to 20 to get to 18? I need to subtract 2. And in each of these instances, I would need to multiply my W by 10 and then subtract 2. So my variable expression would be, 10 times W minus 2. If I look at this one, there doesn't seem to be a pattern. I'm increasing by 1 on the Q column, or on my left column, but when I look at my right column, I'm not increasing by the same amount every time. So now I have a challenge of looking and deciding how do the numbers in my left column relate to the numbers in my right column? Well, to get from 1 to 1, I don't do anything. To get from 2 to 4, I can do that by multiplying by 2. 3 to 9 is 3 times 3. To go from 4 to 16, that's 4 times 4. And 5 to 25, that's 5 times 5. 
So let's look back at that one column. Using my pattern, where I am multiplying each Q value by itself, I can look back and say, well, 1 times 1 equals 1, and it still fits my pattern. So in this case, I'm taking Q and multiplying it by itself, or written with uh, exponents, I'm actually taking Q and squaring it. Let's try one more. Let's look at F. In this case, I'm increasing by 1 each time on the F column. So I look over to the right and notice I am, an, I am increasing by 6 each time. So that tells me I'm going to have a 6F. And let's see how this works. Let's substitute F for some of our values. 6 times 1 is 6, but I need 8. What do I need to add or subtract from 6 to get 8? 2. Let's see if it works with the next one. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 gives me 14. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 2 is 26. And 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2 is 32. So in each of these, I am taking my variable, f, and each number I substitute it for, I'm multiplying it by 6, then adding 2, to get the right column. So my algebraic expression is 6f plus 2. This table looks a little different because it's going horizontally, but we're going to treat it the same way. On my position row, I notice that I am still increasing by 1 each time. So to find p, I need to look at my value of the term and notice I'm adding 5 each time. So that tells me I'm going to have a 5p. But 1 times 5 does not equal 7. 1 times 5 is 5. To get from 5 to 7, I need to add 2. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12. Let's see if this rule works for every position. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22. So let's look at what we're doing. We're taking our p-values and multiplying them by 5, and then adding 2. And we're doing that each time. So my algebraic expression is going to be 5p plus 2. Now I'm going to show you five more slides. They're going to be numbered 8 through 12. On each slide, you must pause the video and complete the table in your notebooks. Don't forget to WSQ. You can go back and watch any portion of this video or the whole video as many times as you need.